In this section, we're going to talk about how to convert visitors into prospects. You've run your ad campaign, you've optimized your website, you've brought them to your page. And now, before they leave, you want to get them to do something. What do you get them to do? And how do you do it? That's what we're going to talk about now. This conversion process really relies very heavily on offers and landing pages. This is where you will engage and close prospects, getting them excited about your product, getting them interested in putting up their hand and saying, hey, I want more. To do that, you have to build a campaign. And your campaign should answer a question that a customer has. When they come to your website and they're looking for information, your campaign should be designed to give them the answers. Before you begin, there are four questions you need to answer. The first, why are you building this campaign? What is it that you want someone to do? What action do you want them to take? Number two, what are you going to offer as an enticement to get them to take that action? Then, once you've built the campaign, how are you going to promote it? Are you going to rely exclusively on SEO? Are you going to use ads? Are you going to use social media? What are you going to do to get this information out there that encourages people to take the next step? And finally, how will you follow up? In this section, we're only going to talk about the first two. Jen's going to talk about how you promote using ads. And then our bonus section on email, I will actually address auto response campaigns that help you follow up after someone has expressed an interest. Okay, let's get started. Why are you building the campaign? One of the best ways to help you get to this answer is to show you examples of other businesses that are using campaigns for different reasons. Free trial. If you have a product that you want people to test drive, creating a campaign and a landing page around a free trial is a great way to get started. This doesn't work for everyone. It definitely works for software, but it can also work if you have a business where you can give them a free sample, maybe one piece of a training class or maybe a free consulting conversation or a free opening conversation. Free trials are tremendously useful in this stage. Maybe you just want to build interest. Um, we were working years ago with a company called Randall Beans, and they sold beans in glass jars. Their online shopping cart was really not where they were making their money because it's too expensive to ship beans. What they really wanted to do and how they knew they would grow their business was if they could just increase interest in the product. And so we used campaigns to offer recipes basically designed to teach people how to use their beans. People could sign up to get a cookbook, they'd be on the newsletter, and every week they would get new recipes. And it drove sales because people got excited about the product. You can use campaigns to demonstrate expertise. If you have white papers and workbooks and information. Again, people have questions. How do I do X or Y? Eventually, they're going to hire you. But these downloads give them a way to say, yeah, you guys really do know what you're talking about. So what will you offer? It starts with what do you know? What do you know that your customers don't, that they have questions about? industry data, survey results, how-to guides. In so many industries, a how-to guide is a great tool because it gives people an introduction to your product or service 
and they may decide after reading it they don't want to do it themselves. They really want to hire you to do it. You can also share ca case studies that demonstrate how other people have used your product. You want to offer things, again, that you know that your audience doesn't know. White papers, workbooks, resource links. One of the things that's really popular are glossaries. If you have an industry, if you're in an industry with a lot of buzzwords, people want to know the vocabulary of that industry. Checklists and oh my goodness, scorecards. Everybody always wants to know how do they match up to other people. And so the scorecard is a great way to get people to interact with you on your website, give you their email address, because that's the key. That's the prize. If someone gives you their email address, now you have an opportunity to stay in touch. The other thing I really like about a scorecard is it's a few questions. Someone answers. They get a score. They walk away happy. You have this powerful information. Now you know that this person was interested enough to fill out the scorecard. And secondly, they've given you information. So when you follow up, you know that this person is good at something or not good at something. You can identify some of their needs and create very targeted follow-up to move them through your pipeline. You can do downloads that inform. If you are in an industry where you are selling a product or a service that people don't buy very often, informational guides are hugely valuable. This was a flooring company. Let's face it. How often do you buy hardwood floor? Once in your life? Maybe you move around a lot and you love to remodel, but you're the exception, not the rule. Most people, if they decide to tear up their linoleum and put down hardwood floor, they don't really know a lot. And so while they're in the research phase, offering them a complete guide to hide hardwood flooring is awesome. They get great information, you get their email address. Answer questions. I love this piece from another marketing agency. What the F is inbound marketing? Every, if you're in an industry where everybody is talking about a product or service and customers really don't understand it, offering guides that answer their questions, that help them feel informed so that they make a good purchase decision, they feel comfortable if the information you provide is good, they're excited to potentially talk to you. Provide resources. I laughed when I saw this because obviously... This is a digital toolbox, and we weren't the first people to think of that name. They offered tools. They gave examples of what you get if you sign up for their newsletter. What else can you offer? Discounts or special offers. Join our club. Get a 5% discount. Join our club. Get coupons every month. Product previews. If you're in an industry where new products are being launched all the time, sign up to get a first look at our latest products. Special events. We host a monthly chat about X, Y, or Z. These are only for members of our list. Sign up now. Podcasts, webinars, videos, information, again, information in different forms that's not available to everyone. Calculators, again, like checklists, people love to play with calculators. You see a lot of this on real estate and mortgage sites and auto sites as people try to figure out, do I have enough money to buy your product or service? Regardless of what you choose, the best offers are short, simple to create and consume and leave the prospects wanting more. Let me say that all again. Short. It's not a 50-page guide. It's a five-page guide. Sure, there's more info, but that only goes to people who are really interested, who open it, who doubt it, who respond to the first email. Then they get an offer for more information. Simple to create. This is not your product. This is your marketing. It should be something that you can do quickly and easily. It may actually already be something that you have. And it should be simple to consume. If I open it up and it's this huge thing, I'm going to close it and look at it later. And later might be two or three years from now. And it leaves the prospects wanting more so that they reach out to you for more.
some other key things to keep in mind. Great offers are ultra specific. They answer one question, not 10. I don't offer you a everything you want to know about marketing guide because you know I can't do it. However, I can give you five tips on writing headlines that convert. Very specific. It won't be for everyone. You can create other offers, but for people who are looking for this information, it's perfect. Immediate gratification. I give you my email. You give me whatever it is you're offering. Something I can look through quickly, get the information, and feel like it was worth my time. And it should have a high perceived value. It doesn't have to be expensive, but it should convey this idea that there's there's something there. And it's designed to shift the relationship. You stop looking at me as just a salesperson and you see me as a resource. Immediate payoff. Let me give you an example. Free updates and my 20-week e-course. Oh my God. I have to wait 20 weeks to get all the information. Even if they download it, my experience after two or three weeks, they stop taking the course. However, there are a few that stay with you. Instead, what I would do here is five weeks. And at the end of the fifth week, I get the opportunity to re-up, to maybe pay a, a small fee for the rest of the information. If the first five weeks weren't good, I'm not signing up. And if I wasn't interested, I'm not going to continue. Either way, you weed out people, but you get more people who sign up because they think, I can become a great freelance writer in five weeks. A better approach, this is not a pretty graphic, but I love the messaging and I think it works really well. Get enough food to feed a family of four in just five, uh, in just four square feet, even if you don't have a yard. It's really narrow. It's for people who have a small area, they want to do gardening, and they really are serious about growing their own food. And I love this call to action. Get instant access. Simple offers. Maybe you have a spreadsheet that you share with clients, that you use with every client so they can track their progress with you. Turn it into a PDF and offer it for people who aren't working with you. Embed your email address and contact information in the form and send them follow-up emails on how to use it and how to call you if they need more information. Collections and tools. This is a fabulous approach. Maybe you have blog posts. And this is what we did with the bean company. We had hundreds of recipes on the website. And all we did was we put them in a Word document. You see the little table of contents, all of the recipes. And then we put a pretty cover on it and saved it as a PDF. This first one had maybe 15 recipes. What we learned over time is if we did just five recipes, people lined up for the collections. So we did uh, bean salad recipes, vegetarian bean recipes, dessert bean recipes. Did you know you could make brownies with beans? We found that out. But what these collections did, number one, it was all content we already had. And yes, people could have found the information if they looked on our website. They just didn't take the time to look. This say it was convenient. And we built a loyal community that actually looked forward to the release of our next cookbook. Then we're going to break here. I want you to answer some questions about the objective for your offer.